Ladies and gentlemen, we at Talanta 47 are always on the move, looking for young and fresh talent. I don't even care if niggas say that I'm skinny, because none of these fat trappers can even see me. Recording their next new single, <laughs> makeovers and sit-downs with their favorite celebrity. Villa Yesu ni vanity. Vanity. Every Sunday at 8 p.m. from all over the country, Mombasa, Kisumu, Uasingishu, you name it. Pomone kano wao, hawezi ukajua lichopitia kwa sura zao wanaweza kukawa mena, lakini nyuma ya hao kuna historia na story katika kipindi mfahamu kiongozi tunakupa nafasi kutengamana nao kila siku ya alhamisi kuanzia saa moja unusu kuendelea na mi Elizabeth Mutuku With love. Put a song in this Watch the Country Ride Show every Sunday from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Good evening to you and welcome to TV 47 weekend tonight on this marvelous Monday. We are coming to you live from Mount Kenya University right here in Kiambu County to a top three stories lined up just for you. From tomorrow we are moving into that area and we will not leave that area until every illegal gun has been returned until all children have gone to school, until we have stopped this menace. Tonight, President William Ruto directs the Kenya Defense Forces to collaborate with the police in a joint security operation across all regions susceptible to banditry. Also tonight, Nairobi County doctors have petitioned the Nairobi County government to reinstate the National Hospital Insurance Fund coverage, threatening to go on strike if the demand is not met. They are hustlers in Nairobi. My doctor is a hustler. We are not a hustler. We are not a hustler. Now here, for all the people who are in we are suffering. Plus, 
The National Syndemic Diseases Control Council organizes a fun fair event at Mount Kenya University for the young people to commemorate World Condom Day. <music> Right, and a very good evening to you. Welcome to the broadcast. Catherine Similoy is on the sign language docket. My name is Stanley Nyeringita. Now to a first uh, story this particular evening on matters in security. Opinion leaders and professionals in West Pokot County have praised President William Ruto's decision to launch a comprehensive crackdown to confiscate all illegal firearms in the hands of the public in areas affected by banditry, including West Pokot, Turkana, El Marakwet, and Samburu counties. On Monday, Pokot leaders criticized Turkana South Member of Parliament John Arico's comments about a recent banditry attack in Kanok that is in Turkana South along the Kitale Lodur Highway. This story was uh, reported by our West Pokot based correspondent Andrew Juma. Barely hours after President Ruto's directive to have a joint operation by the Kenya Defense Forces and the National Police Service deployed in all bandit prone areas starting this Tuesday, in a move to collect all illegal firearms, leaders from West Pokot County have loaded the move, saying they are ready to collaborate with the government in order to end the incessant banditry attacks. Why have you? Was it more rise when in Mahasala? Sikisa Ukweli? Na usiumize watu yako. Hiyo ndio mwito wetu kama wa Pokot. Hiyo ndio nimetufanya sasa tuongee ukweli. Kwa sababu yaza uongo ita itaongoza nchi mpaka lini? Ningependa nimwambie eh, Rais Daktari William Ruto kwamba yale ambayo yalitendeka hapa chini yalienda out of proportion. Kwa kitu kimoja tunataka tuelewe kwamba Askari ya Kenya wanatakana kuchunga mwananchi na mali yake. Kama ni shetani ilingilia askari moja akapika risasi ngombe, hapo ndiye maneno ilienda out of hand. Na tunangepena tuseme, sijajua ni kwanini hawa waturkana wameingia wame wame ndani kulalamika. Wanalalamika, a, a, m, turkana na mpokota wajapikana. Na tumeambia watu yetu wa maintain refrain wasi, wasi, wasi kosane na majirani yao. Hata na hiyo ya kunini, hiyo tunasema na shetani ya shindu. This is after several banditry attack cases had been reported in West Pokot, Turkana and El Marakwet borders affecting all human activities in the areas, including learning activities along the wider Kerio Valley. Ni nani president gini ambayo tutanda lili ambayo tupatiwe KVR wana? Sasa tumeenda sasa kusema hivi sisi kwa Pokot, tunambia mungu saidia sisi. Saidia kabisa. Na tumesema kwa sababu wale watu wamekuwa wajeuri. Wamekuwa na kiburi mingi. From tomorrow we are moving into that area. And we will not leave that area until every illegal gun has been returned. Until all children have gone to school. Until we have stopped this menace. Na kwanzia kesho, tutakuwa na polisi pale, tutakuwa na wanajeshi pale. So, tunataka kuambia watu wenye wanapenda amani. Kama huko na bunduki ambayo ujapatiwa lesen na serikali, udishi. At the same time, the leaders called on Turkana South Member of Parliament, John Ariko, to withdraw his statements after the Kainuk banditry attack, which claimed the lives of three police officers, leaving seven with injuries on Sunday. Kitu cha kwanza ningependa kulaani kabisa matamshi ya viongozi ya majirani yetu vile wame address issue pertaining peace. Mjumbe ya Turkana South na seneta yake. Ningependa tu tuulize dunia hii. Kama seneta anatembea na silaha na anaita wale wengine bandits Ningependa kutumu tuseme bandit number one ni mwenye anamiliki hiyo sila. Ya pili, hawezi akatishia mwananchi mtukufu ya Republic ya Kenya, hata kama anaito mpokot, kwamba hatakani kuwa 
uh, uh, kuwa ana, ana, anaishi Turkana ama ako shule Turkana ama anafanya shughuli yake Turkana The move by President Ruto is likely to elicit mixed reactions among locals some believing that the KDF officers may bring more harm than good to the affected areas and from matters of uh, security, now let us cross to the corridors of the guest house and the 14th parliament will resume its sessions on Tuesday for the second session after a long holiday break. Uh, legislators are eager to discuss several issues that have accumulated, including the cost of living. Now, the first supplementary budget of the Kenya Kwanzaa government and a memorandum regarding the creation of the office of opposition will be among uh, the key, legis key agendas to be discussed. More William with details. The National Assembly and Senate will resume their second session after a lengthy break on Tuesday with a number of pressing issues at the forefront of the legislators' agenda. One of the top priorities for the legislator during their first session will be the consideration of the first supplementary budget under President William Ruto's administration. As Kenyans anticipate, the 14th Parliament is expected to promptly address the rising cost of living through crucial law proposals and amendments. I will be presenting shortly our revised budget that will actualize the context of national budgetary decision making, balancing limited resources against the demanding needs for equitable allocation and avoidable obligations makes hard and unpopular decisions inevitable. There can be no taxation without representation. National Assembly Majority Leader Kemani Ishungwa previously stated that they will be working against the clock to conclude the debate on the supplementary budget as soon as possible to maintain seamless government operations. The majority party is eager to advance President William Ruto's legislative agenda. It is undisputed that governments all over the world exist to serve their people. And parliaments in effect act as a principal lawmaking institution that is charged with the legislative function, hence setting the boundaries within which any government, including you as your excellency, will operate. Additionally, a high-stake exchange is anticipated between the ruling Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance and opposition members mainly from Raila Odinga's Azimio La Umoja. Both houses are expected to have heated sessions with each side pushing for their respective agendas including President Ruto's and Odinga's to be passed. For instance, the president's memorandum on the creation of the office of the leader of the opposition is likely to be a topic of lively debate. President Ruto wrote a letter to National Assembly Speaker Moses Wetangula and Senate Speaker Amazon Kingi asking them to consider the introduction of a constitutional amendment bill to set up the office of the official opposition leader. Kitu ambacho kina zidi na kuendelea kukandamiza viyama vya kisiasa hapa nchini uh, ndiposa hata unona hiyo watu kuenda ikulu na hali kadhalika ni kwa ajili ya upinzani kukosa raslimali za kuweza kuendelesha programu walizonazo na iwapo tafika mahali ambapo uh, katika kitita cha kitaifa kuna kuwa na ule mgao ambao unaelekezwa katika ofisi hiyo ili kuweza kuimarisha uh, upinzani itakuwa sawa as parliament resumes its operations apart from the legislative and oversight duties Kenyans will closely monitor the efforts of their representatives in reducing the cost of living as promised by the Kenya Kwanzaa government during their campaign rallies leading up to the 2022 general election Mwigi William TV 47 Right, and we'll definitely be keeping our eyes and ears to just see what will be happening on the corridors of the August House and the intricates that will be playing right there. Even as the President William Ruto seemingly is bolstering his uh, Kenya Kwanzaa numbers in the Parliament, uh, which is the National Assembly and the Senate. Let's get into matters security now. The government has taken a decisive uh, step to deploy more Kenya Defence Forces, that is KDF soldiers, to areas in the northeastern region that have been suffering from persist persistent banditry attacks and rising fatalities. Now today, uh, President William Ruto announced that the government has reached a point of no return and that uh, things will not continue as a usual starting tomorrow. Now Tuesday, February 14th. Collins Lusuti has that story. 
A tough operation is set to begin on Tuesday, February 14th, after a meeting between President William Root and leaders from the North Rift region, an operation targeting gunmen behind the incessant attacks in the north. Nilikuwa baringo. Nimekuwa hiyo, nimilikuwa Turkana. Nilikuwa Samburu. Watu wengi wamepoteza mifugo yao, wamepoteza maisha yao. Tukiongea mashule karibu kumi na tano hayajafunguliwa. Tukiongea magari ya polisi imechomwa chuzi kule Turkana. The decision to launch the operation comes in the wake of killings in the area, leaving locals in constant fear. Inuk Kaptir, tumechoka na tumechoka. Serikali chukua mamlaka yako, deal na wawa korofi wamba wametusumbua. We are just tired. How can we be slaughtered like goats and animals? And the government of Kenya is just watching. We just days ago, four police officers were killed by suspected bandits in Kainuk area along the Kitale Lodwa Road, with 12 others fighting for their lives in hospital. Iyo area yote ambaye tuko nayo na matatizo tumesema from tomorrow everybody mwenye ako na bunduki ambayo sio halali ambayo hajapatiwa na serikali they must surrender in three days in a meeting with leaders from Baringo County the president announced the operation will involve the Kenya Defense Forces soldiers and the police in a bid to restore calm in the region na kuanzia kesho tutakuwa na polisi pale tutakuwa na wanajeshi pale so tunataka kuambia watu wenye wanapenda amani kama uko na bunduki ambayo hujapatiwa leseni na serikali rudisha interior cabinet secretary professor kithure kindiki has this evening released a statement declaring parts of north rift that have been affected by insecurity disturbed and dangerous <laughs> the statement reads Further in the exercise of the powers conferred under Article 2413B of the Constitution of Kenya, read together with Section 8.1 of the Public Order Act, Cap 56 Laws of Kenya, and Sections 1 and 1061 of the National Police Service Act, Cap 11A, 2011, I have today, February 13th, 2023, declared through a Kenya Gazette notice of even date, certain areas specified therein within as disturbed and dangerous. <laughs> The affected counties are Trukana, West Pokot, Elgeo, Marakwet, Baringo, Laikipi and Samburu. Meanwhile, Chairperson of the Task Force mandated to look at the welfare reforms within the National Police Service, David Maraga, has today visited Trukana County to offer messages of condolences to the family of police officers who lost their lives in an attack at Kainuk area a week ago. Unfortunate, it's unfortunate and we want to send a message of condolences to the families of those officers who have uh, died in, in, in this, what they call, um, forward areas, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. Collins Lusweti, TV 47. And away from that, Bondo Member of Parliament, that is Dr. Gideon Ochanda, was today relieved of his position as the Secretary of the Orange Democratic Movement Party, that is ODM, a Bondo sub-branch, during a meeting chaired by CIA Senator Dr. Oboru Odinga. There's our very own Chichi Josephine tells us, members of the branch executive committee who met at the ODM offices in Bondo, uh, in Parliament, uh, in Bondo, further resolved that Ochanda be expelled from the party and his uh, sponsorship to Parliament be withdrawn. Uh, this as President William Ruto maintains that he will not ask for permission for anyone. <laughs> Few days after ODM leaders asked the party to suspend the Member of Parliament alleged to be going against the party rules, Bondo Member of Parliament Gideon Ochanda is the first member to be suspended from his position as Secretary of the ODM party in the area. <laughs> Thank you, Ochanda's acts fell at a meeting presided over by CIA Senator Oboro Ginga, where the ODM chairman for Bondo region, George Ochiang Mawere, announced that the member of parliament's position will be replaced by Francis Otieto. These members here today unanimously agreed that they have expelled Dr. Gideon Ochanda from being the secretary of the branch, and his position is taken by Dr. Francis Otiato. CIA Senator Dr. Oboro Ginga said ODM 
cannot tolerate indiscipline within its rank, where he filed and accused Dr. Ochenda of betraying the party. And the conduct uh, of our member of parliament has been unbecoming in the last few uh, weeks. First, he made a statement which was uh, clearly attacking the, the party uh, and party policies and uh, stating that he would, uh, that he thinks the line the party is taking <coughs> is illegal. Meanwhile, ODM leader Raila Odinga's visit to Kisi has been surrounded by controversy after leaders from the county said that they will join the president and are ready to welcome him to Kisi. <laughs> The hard stance on who should work with who was again amplified by President William Ruto while on his tour of Nakuru County. Na kama inaitaji karuhusa ya kufanya kazi mwananchi ya mekupatia, si unarudi kwa mwananchi kumuuliza ruhusa kama, kama hiyo kazi halikupatia ufanye ama usifanye, so tuwache hiyo mamba ya upuzi. The president said his government is ready to work with all elected leaders and will not ask for permission to associate with anyone. We do not need the permission of anybody to work together as leaders in the Republic of Kenya. If there is any permission, it is from the voters. When you are elected, you are given the permission by the electorate to work for them, to, uh, to work with other leaders so that we can change their lives, change our country, and make Kenya a better nation. This coming a day after the president reiterated his readiness to work with all leaders elected through other parties after he received Jubilee Party Member of Parliament. Kwa sababu mimi ndiyo kiongozi wa Kenya, nitafanya kazi na viongozi wote waliopata na fasi ya kuchaguliwa na kupatika taifa letu la Kenya bila ya kujali wanatoka jamii gani, kabila gani, chama gani, tutafanya kazi ya kupeleka taifa letu mbele pamoja. Ruto, who spoke during a national prayer service in Nakuru, said Jubilee, a party which unceremoniously exited him, will now work with the United Democratic Alliance. Chichi Josephine, TV47. And from matters politics to matters health in Nairobi County, where Nairobi County doctors staged a demo outside the Nairobi County government's office, petitioning the Nairobi, Nairobi County government to reinstate the national NHIF coverage. This even as uh, some patients were turned away in some hospitals. According to the medical professionals, the issue with health coverage began after the new government took control and dissolved the Nairobi Metropolitan Services NMS, transferring health services back to the county government of Nairobi. Yes. As we speak, we had a meeting with our governor, Sakaja. He's a very honorable man. He says he can't do anything. His hands are tied because he has no deed of innovation. Why is that deed? Yes. Why is that deed? We go for it. Why is that deed? We are being deducted money, NHF statutory money every month, 1,700. It's not being remitted to NHF. Why is that money going? The outraged doctors stated that the situation is so dire that many of them can no longer afford the services they provide. Imagine we are giving a service which ourselves cannot get it. We have doctors who are in hospital as we speak. They are being detained in hospitals because of bills we cannot pay. Yes. Doctor is just a title. There is no money in that doctor. So you can imagine being told to pay 700,000, 1 million in one day. Where will you get that power? Shame! 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 Shame. Shame. They now want the national government to intervene in the matter or else their strike continues. Mr. President, we are, we are, we are talking to you. We are hustlers of Nairobi. Madaktari pia ni mahasla. Hatuna bima ya afya. Tunataka ututete. Now here, fahali wawili wanapigana, we are suffering. We as doctors, we are suffering. We go to work, we, are, we see our patients diligently, we work, we give care which is needed, but we come to our side, we don't have care. How do you expect us to, to suffer? They claim that NMS left a 1 billion shillings debt at NHIF accrued over a period of two years. A spot check done by TV47 in a few of the county hospitals showed that operations continued smoothly in most of them with very few patients being turned away. <laughs> Yeah, so and I mean, yeah, see the experience in Mbaya, but kuna easy, easy my confusion zawatu. 
sasa kuna mali nimeenda e, jina sasa unaona kama huko mali una fawendo ulipe consultation fee e, jina yangu ni kandi kwa Mary Njoki sasa mimi naitwa Raivon kwa nimekuja hapa mama Lucy clinic ya mtoto nimepata warembo pale wakifanya kazi yao na wakanihudumia eh sijaona ubaya yoyote Uh, nilikuwa nimepewa appointment huyu mtoto ako na extra digit sijapata huduma juu amesema daktari wa migoma kwa kufanya hiyo surgery mm. ndeti 20 mm. zina muhammed t47 And it matters health now the minister of education has sent a stern warning to school administrators who are illegally transferring grade 7 learners to class 8 for parents who are, are trying to avoid taking their children through the competency based curriculum and according to um and according to a circular sent to newsrooms the education pr stated that action will be taken against such school administrators It all started in Garissa County when the Garissa Township Deputy County Commissioner Solomon Chisut issued a warning to teachers and parents against occasioning skipping of junior secondary schools by learners under the competency based curriculum to join the standard 8 classes under the 844 system. <laughs> wanarukisha watoto wanaenda kuregista katika darasa la nane. Na ningependa kuwaonya walimu mtapoteza kazi zenu mtatapoteza kazi na hiyo atichezi. Hakuna vile unaweza rukisha mtoto kutoka class 6 kuregista kama class 8. And we have notorious schools. We have their list. We have forwarded to the Department of Criminal Investigation. Action will be taken. And now Education PS Belio Kipsang has cautioned learning institutions that are facilitating the illegal transfers of grade 7 learners to class 8. This illegality involves falsification of school records, falsification of birth records and bio data of grade 7 learners, attempts to change or obtain new birth certificates by parents to aid in their malpractice, generation of new UPI for continuing learners, presenting grade 7 learners as class 8 and facilitating transfers of grade 7 learners into other schools and presenting them as class 8 transfers the government says that action will be taken against any school found engaging in such malpractice kama unadanganyika kwamba utafaulu na hiyo wewe na mtoto wako na mwalimu wewe ambaye mnashirikiana pamoja nyinyi ni candidates wa kupelekwa jela watoto hawa si watoto wako peke yake ni watoto wa serikali watoto wapitie junior secondary school si junior secondary school Waenda pole pole wafanye class 8 waende high school unawaharakisha uwapeleke wapi There have been reports of attempts by some primary schools to register grade 7 learners for 2023 KCPE exams so that they avoid going through the competency based curriculum and so field officers have been asked to validate all registration data for KCPE and point out any abnormal increase in KCPE candidature against 2022 class 7 enrollment Sharon Baranga TV47 Right and meanwhile the Media Council of Kenya has called upon media practitioners to take a key role in informing and uh, educating the public on matters peace and development based issues in the counties speaking in Isiolo County during the marking of World Radio Day which is attended by journalists from the region Kranja Jackson the coordinator of Media Council of Kenya Eastern Region called upon journalists to help in spreading information that promotes peace in the country the theme for this here is a radio and peace granger say that the media has a big role to help in disseminating on peace which will set a good foundation for development uh, what we are doing is that we have rebranded the, the cards themselves uh, they will come with a verification card and a few other features that make it a bit difficult from uh, the ones that people have been creating out there the second thing we are doing is engaging with different institutions this is both at the local government and even at the national government where only accredited journalists 
will be engaged. It's a conversation that, and we signed an MOU a few weeks ago uh, with the Council of Governors, where I, even the communication teams within the county governments will only be working with journalists that are only accredited accredited by the council. That will be one of the first steps that we will do. The second will be engaging with other like-minded institutions, things like AMWIC, uh, Kenya Correspondents Association, KUJ, uh, Kenya Editors Guild, and other like-minded institutions to ensure that all of us are singing one tune of ensuring that only accredited journalists are even getting trainings and capacity buildings. That way, we will continue pushing these people out of our zone. The next will be down to us who are professional, those that are accredited, to ensure that we, we flag and point out to those that are doing it uh, in the wrong way. In, a, in an engagement that, like the one we are having, we should be able to call out and say this journalist is one of the pretender journalists that we have in our county. And indeed, happy world. Sona moja imetengenezwa kwa njia speciali ili kupambana na maumivu kwa haraka. Sona moja ina aspirin kama kiungo. Sona moja. Kitulizo kamili. Maumivu ya kizidi pata ushauri wa daktari. Tricent School of Medical Health Science and Technology is a premier training institute for market-driven courses. With state-of-the-art facilities, competent and dedicated members of staff, and linkages with the medical industry, you are assured of a bright future when you study with us. Enroll today in our campuses at Juja, Nairobi West, Kisumu, and Homa Bay. Ni watu kwa nakati na mna gani nataka kutumia huko ndani? Nimekuja na hii na hii gani ndio inatumika? Hii paketi ama hii kuchota kuchota? Kweni serious hii? Bwana wacheni mchezo bwana. Ni nini nini? Karibu customer. Hizi bidhaa unaziacha pale kwenye lage ndipo sasa ufanye shopping kwa supermarket yetu. Chota kuchota ni kufanya shopping peke. Eh? Ni kufanya shopping. Ni mwana hitia supermarket ndio best. Kwa mara nyingine na kulitia chota kuchota na hitia supermarket kushiriki shindano la chota kuchota tuwet bunawe, kitali, bungoma, elore kakamega, kisumu, busia naivasha, limuru, nairobi thika, nyeri, meru, chuka na maua, nunua bidhaya shilingi miya sita na zaidi na utapewa rafo ticket yaza vizuri na utumbukiza kwa sanduku iliyo mlangoni, utakuwa maingia kwa droya kujishindia za wadi da hatu mira, pikipikish na moja aina ya tvs, elfu ya moja thalathini school fees, tvs Shopping vouchers na vingine vingi Pas, ni huku Saitia vimi Chota kuchota imethaminiwa na Dewey Bagon, Savana Juice Fruit Vial, My Choice Hand Wash, Zesta Choco Primo, Ketepa, Blue Band, Aramco, Oven Fresh Bread, Nivea, Silent Night Mattresses, Coca-Cola, Pamoja na Hisense Kindano hili limeithimishwa na BCLB Promise Number 002816 Sheria na Masharti Kutumika Chota kuchota na Ketia Supermarket na hii motoka Kari Smart kapisa inaesa kwa yako unangoja nini ingia fanya shopping yako heti ya supermarket uchoto kuchote na hii kari hii motoka inaesa kwa yako mtu anaesa pesha kwa mtu heti ya supermarket a world of choice Right, 32 minutes past the top of the hour. You're definitely watching TV 47. We can just stick around as we update you on what is happening. And we do start with, or rather continue, with uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Roads, Transport and Public Works, that is Kipchumba Murkom, and has assured that there will be no po there will be no more political interference in the running of the Kenya Ports Authority. The CS also presided of uh, the integration of the authorities' board members who have been given a one-week deadline to commit the recruitment process of a substantive uh, MD by April 1st. April 1st April 4th. Yeah. 
With the authority in the process of picking a new managing director in the recruitment process that ended on January 13th, the current chair of the Kenya Ports Authority and former Kinango member of parliament, Benjamin Tayari, chaired a meeting that saw cabinet secretary Kip Chumba Murkomen meet the authority's board members to discuss operation of the Mombasa port. Uh, Speaking in Mombasa after officiating the first KPA board meeting, Murkomen claimed that the authority has over the years been under political influence in the past regime, which he said has affected their performance of the port, thus calling for the new committee to undertake a review of the KPA Act of 1979 with a view of strengthening the management of the port. The completion of review of KPA Act must be done. And that's something, the, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll be asking you to prioritize. My office will be ready. Uh, to make sure that we have the act and then we deliver, we submit it to parliament. We don't want to introduce a new tax, okay? Uh, we have been doing everything as a country to reduce uh, the cost of doing business. So as a result, we've told the, port, uh, the county of Mombasa, if there is a service that, is being, that they are providing to the port, we are willing by law to recognize that service and the Kenya Ports Authority be billed for that service. Murkomen assured the issue of politics and impunity will no longer interfere with the port's affairs under his tenor as the cabinet secretary further urging the board to be creative, saying that they were coming in at the authority at a crucial time when the port is facing a myriad of challenges. Top of the list, he said, is competition from the neighbors. Uh, in a positive way, it calls for us also to make sure that we put in necessary investment in this port to keep uh, being, you know, a mile away from competition if we must make sure that this port remains a port of choice. Also present was the new transport PS Mohamed Dakar who assured the new board of the ministry's full support as they delivered on the mandate in the next three years. The KPA board chair Benjamin Tayari assured the cabinet secretary that they were ready for the task ahead, promising that the board will work as a team. We'll do our best and to ensure that... Uh, all what uh, uh, you've set for us and uh, His Excellency to make sure that this port uh, becomes one of the best that will make sure we achieve that. And uh, I also want to uh, uh, assure you that uh, we will work as a team. As what as you, you've requested, I believe and I'm very sure that this team will work together. Somali is expected to open the new deep water port in the city of Gara this month. At the same time, the port of Djibouti in Djibouti has also been expanding operations over the years with Tanzania also expected to open a new port in Zanzibar soon, which will bring great competition as the Mombasa port has for a long time been an automatic port of choice in the region. Nobat Oduor, TV 47. <laughs> And from that, the Mount Kenya University of Rwanda, that is MKUR, celebrated its 13th anniversary by launching a book that showcases the institution's journey and achievements. The book, entitled Mountain Meets Land of a Thousand Hills, was launched during a ceremony where the university also announced its plans to open a hospitality training hotel called the Kigali Paramount Hotel. Mount Kenya University founder, Professor Simon Gisharu, emphasized the importance of Africa telling its own stories and viewed the launch of the book as a call to action. For the future and become creators and problem solvers once they graduate. And I want to encourage uh, the students who are here, know that you're in the right place. This is the University of Chelsea. As a member of parliament, uh, Professor Gishel, I want to commit that I'm going to register laws that are going to increase the national budget of all the partner states towards research. Uh, of, uh, the research activities of our universities because we must have science driven solutions to the problems that are facing us as West Africans. The other commitment that I want to give is that we are going to have what you call common recognition of professions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the guest of honor, uh, Balozi, Mwishimwa uh, Osoro. And I'm wishing you a Mwangi, um, distinguished guests. Good afternoon. Afternoon or morning? Afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Now, I will say much because my colleagues have spoken, and by protocol, once Mwishimwa Osoro has spoken, 
that we should that should have been the end of it. But just let me say two things: integration of East Africa. Right, good stuff right there. Now, for the past 15 years or so, the world has been commemorating the International uh, Day of Condoms every 13th day of February, a day set aside by the AIDS Healthcare Foundation, that is ADH, uh, a AHF, to remind people the need to wear condoms. Now, in Kenya, the National Syndemic Diseases uh, Control Council, that is NSDCC, uh, organized a fun fair event in Mount Kenya University, where we are coming to you live right now for the young people and here. Here is the highlight. Sexual reproductive activists, health stakeholders in the private and public sector, as well as students, joined in this procession. Sensitizing the public on the need to have safe sex. The event, organized by the National Syndemic Diseases Control Council and SDCC, aimed at making the conversation and using condoms as fun as possible. Here, the students got to learn the different types of condoms and how they are used. We're being sorted in the market. We decided to bring our own condoms in the market which are affordable. So this is something that we are launching today. And people have shown key interest today to us. Yes. Being a virgin is still cool, it is still okay. As government, we say abstain. If you cannot be faithful to your partner, if you cannot use a condom, use a condom and they're available. Either from government or please buy a condom. If you can spend 1,500 shillings on pints, on booze, you can buy a condom for 50 shillings. Thank you very much. Happy Valentine's Day. And we look forward to launching the new condoms from Alpha Medical and to having Color Festival. Thank you and God bless you. According to a report by the Kenya Demographic Health Survey 2022, a higher proportion of men than women reported having two or more sexual partners in the 12 months prior to the survey. Of those with more than one partner in the last 12 months, 24% of women and 45% of men reported using a condom during their last sexual intercourse. And according to the students here, more sensitization needs to be done, mostly among the youth. Now, the drought situation in Mandera County continues to affect humans and livestock severely, following four successive uh, failed rainy seasons. Now, an estimated 200,000 people are experiencing severe food insecurity, while around 100,000 children are likely to suffer from acute malnutrition. Hashim Jamal reports. So dry is a place that some children born two to three years ago have never seen torrents of rain. In Mandera North, a group of farmers who are predominantly pastoralists have embraced mixed farming through installation of irrigation projects in the region. The farm is an admirable green wonder along River Dawa flowing from the Ethiopian highlands across the common border with Ethiopia. The farms are dotted with papau, bananas, orange-fledged sweet potatoes, grafted oranges, lemons, mangoes and watermelons at various stages of growth. Rokia Mahmoud, one of the farmers in Mandera North, is seen harvesting the orange-fledged sweet potatoes in her farm. She has decided to grow the crop as it will help children who are malnourished in the region. Sweet potato is kwa umuhimu wake iko na faida mingi kwa watoto. Ile malnutrition ambayo iko inasaidia. Kwa kutokana na hiki angazi iko na muhimu mingi. Inasaidia sana tunawaambia watu wetu wanunulie watoto ka ina inaweza kuwa kama breakfast kwa mama ambaye wananyonyesha wana watu ambaye wako na mzito mzi na watoto hasa watoto The farmers have expressed a range of challenges in the farms including the scarcity of water as the Dawa River the only source of water dries up human wildlife conflict and the shortage of pump set engines Mohamed Mahmoud, an agricultural officer in Mandera North, stated that in partnership with the World Food Program and Mandera County Government, they have initiated training for Mandera farmers on drought-resistant crops. Mara ni ya mifugo 
Mara ni, ni wanyama wapori. So in terms of diversification, we are encouraging farmers also to, to go towards crop production. And one of the crop which we are focusing on is uh, this orange flesh, sweet potato. Uh, we are focusing on it and also other crops because uh, one of the challenges we have here in, in uh, the county is the issue of malnutrition among children. The Department of Agriculture Mandera County, led by its director, Bernardo Gutu, will partner with the World Food Program to support Mandera farmers in terms of irrigation to increase food production. Mandera has been among counties hardest hit by the brutal effects of drought due to the climate change. Hashim Jimal reporting for TV 47, Mandera County. And away from that, a group of members of parliament from the Mount Kenya region are advocating for parliamentary amendment that will have the constituency development fund, that is CDF, allocated based on population. Now they believe that the current formula is discriminatory and benefits constituencies with smaller populations. Led by a thicker member of parliament, Alice Nganga, the legislators intend to gather support from fellow parliamentarians in the region. Uh, they argue that their constituencies have a large population including a significant number of students attending higher learning institutions and are among the most densely populated areas in the country. For even when I am representing, I am representing 160,000. representation ya watu 30,000. That one yu inaitwa discrimination na tunafinyiria watoto wetu na tunafinyiria development ya watu wetu. Kwa hivyo nataka kusema siku ya leo nimesukuma hii gurudumu hivi karibuni mtakuwa mnanisikia nikikuwa na amendment mingi sana kule bungeni kwa CDF. Hebu tutaguzie ni wangapi wamechukua forms za basari kwa constituency hapa. Kwa wale wamechukua basari forms kwa wakati huu walikuwa 25600. Na ndio sasa kama wabunge kuna constituencies ambazo wako na pesa mingi wanapeleka watoto mpaka ma universities na pesa ya basari. Sisi kama wabunge tumesema, hii bunge ya tukumina tatu, na tulikuwa mombasa kama kama viongozi. Na tukasema, katika order paper hama inakuja, tutaweka one man one shilling, ili pesa ya basari. Isiwe inapatianwa kwa sababu ya, 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 ya kulingana na, 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 na constituency. Iwe inapatianwa kulingana na idadi ya watu ambao waka upakina constituency. Ili pia, watu wote watoshelejwe, na na na, na tuwe, tuwe, tuwe na levo, levo, levo moja ya masomo na pia tushikilia watoto wetu wengi ili pia wao waweze kusoma and to County 001, and Kenya today received another luxurious cruise ship uh, with uh, 1,500 passengers and a crew on board that docked at the port of Mombasa in the wee hours of 2 a.m. About 800 passengers disembarked from uh, this particular ship. So, so far, we are glad and we are happy to have received, uh, we are happy to have received uh, four vessels so far. And uh, this uh, MV Atania is the second one, this uh, year, that is 2023. So what that means is that uh, it's a great thing for our economy and Kenya at large because of uh, what uh, the effects that uh, cruise uh, tourism has in the economy. So this has been achieved through collaboration uh, amongst the different uh, government agencies and private players who work together to ensure that the cruise tourism is uh, adequately and effectively promoted in the country. I'm sure that uh, it's necessary also for your, for your country, uh, more and more cruise ships coming to make a deal and to grow industry of the tourism. And I wish you all the best in this aspect. Hopefully the the world will be open after the pandemic and you will receive uh, in your beautiful port with a very nice opportunity with a excellent terminal and uh, pier and authorities and your business will grow up grow up in the future so i wish you this very much 
Right now to the wonderful world of sports. And we do begin with some, <coughs> pardon me, the Africa Club uh, Cup for Club Championships Hockey Tournament kicked off earlier today as three Kenyan teams won their respective matches at the Sikh Union grounds at the Nairobi City Parks grounds, respectively. Kenyan police defeated Zimbabwe's Hippos 1 0, courtesy of a goal scored uh, of uh, defender Sami Okungo as a target to top Pool B by defeating Shakria of Egypt. Nigeria. Jerry's police machine, uh, machine and revenue authority of Ghana. Minol Kenya Hockey Federation League champions Butali Sugar Warriors defeated their compatriots Western Jaguars 2 1 as Moses Ademba and Calvin Kanui Akanu scored goals for Butali while Derek Wakwabubi pulled one back for Western Jaguars. In the women's category, Lakers and Blazers played out to a 1 1 draw after Euselia Chirotich found Lakers ahead in the 13th minute before Joan and Jao Maranda equalized for Blazers in the 30th minute. I didn't expect us uh, to begin on a, on a negative because we considered too early. And then uh, we had moments to get back into the game early enough, but we didn't take our chances. This is our first time actually at this stage. So going forward, we'll use this uh, uh, to gel, to prepare for the upcoming season. But of course we are not we want to perform. Wasawa ila tuli tulitarajia kushinda lakini tunashukuru Mungu kwa matokeo. Uh, hadi sasa tuko na imani kuwa tutaweza kushinda um, uh, hizo mechi zenye zimebaki ili tuweze kuibua ushindi hapo uh, kati ya namba moja, mbili hapo tatu. Lazima tutoke na medali katika hii ushindi wa ESCC. And to the game of kings and queens, teenager sensation Mutahe Kibuku earlier today uh, jumped atop the leaderboard after cutting a four under par in the second round of the final leg of the safari to a golf series at the Muthaiga Golf Club and Country. Now Kibuku was in fine form as he overcame overnight leaders Gaita Rodell, Daniel Nduva and Samuel Njiroge who had tied in the first place on the opening day of the competition after each recorded a four under par speaking after the event, Kibugu stated that he had a slow start in the competition, however, made amends to strike a beer, to, to strike a body in the 18th hole as he maintained his strategy of being focused till the end of the event. Today's round saw 22 players making the cut and advancing to the third round of the tournament, where the winner will walk away with 300,000 Kenyan shillings as players look to qualify into the magical Kenya Open slated to take place from the 9th to the 12th of March this year at the Mudanga Golf Club. Um, it feels good. This is my first lead in a uh, Safari Tour after 36 holes, so another goal accomplished and uh, yeah, feel, feels good, feels good. I was just uh, in between decision. I wanted to go for the green, but the wind just wasn't allowing me to. So I laid up and I just made a poor swing, hit it in the right bunker and uh, yeah, I just struggled to get up and down from there. Hit two shots to get to the green and didn't make the putt, so I made a bogey. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it day by day, hole by hole. And uh, if that means that I come out with the trophy on Wednesday, that it will be amazing. But I'm just going to stay in the moment and continue focusing on the process. And now to matters of football, Kakamega homeboys are let today unveiled Patrick Othiambo as their new head coach. The Kakamega-based football club unveils Othiambo days after John Barraza was fired due to the inconsistent performance displayed in the club's league fixtures and uh, served as... Uh, Othiambo served as Steven Pollack's assistant at Gormahi in the 2019-2020 season and previously coached Western Steamer, Agrochemicals, Mohoroni Youth, Chemilil Sugar and Sony Sugar. He briefly served as Kakamega Homeboy's assistant coach at the start of the 2020-2021 season, then left in May 2021 for Tanzanian Premier League side Biashara United, where he served for seven months before shifting to prison FC and got fired earlier this uh, year. Othiambo will be assisted by Ibrahim Shikanda, formerly at Nzoia, and Jeffa Sodongo, who joins the side from Wazito. We have a lot of results that have come out. We have a lot of results that have come out. We have a lot of pressure that have come out. We have a lot of pressure that have come out. We have a lot of pressure that have come out. We have a lot of pressure that have come out. We have a lot of pressure that have come out. 
na ndio nikaamua kubadilisha hata wale walikuwa pasi ni wabaya lakini niliona timu imekuwa mzito kwa liko from prison nilikuwa nikitoka hapa nilienda biashara nikakuja prison but before coming up and nilikuwa nilikuwa gormaya so nadhani niko na experience kidogo ya, ya, ya football ya, ya Kenya 